What's up friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing my experience with the Garmin Vivo Smart 4, a fitness tracker with a small footprint, but a heck of a lot of data packed into it. Now I've been wearing it for the past month alongside my Apple Watch and Aura Ring to see how the data might compare. And in this video, I'll give you a breakdown of how this thing works, what makes it different from a lot of other trackers on the market, and whether or not I think it's worth trying out. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My mission is to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness. I do product reviews weekly, so if you're into this, click that subscribe button and join the type A tribe. So in this video, I'll be breaking things down into the following, comfort and design, accuracy, and we'll take a look at my sleep and fitness data, unique metrics like stress and pulse oximetry. And finally, we'll wrap things up with my pros and my cons. And a quick side note, a huge shout out to my friend Bruno, who reached out to me about a month ago asking me to review this product. So I bought it myself on Amazon for about 99 bucks. I am not sponsored or affiliated at all with Garmin. You now the Vivo Smart 4 has been out for a while, so I'm not gonna pretend like I'm the first YouTuber reviewing it. But what I do plan to share is a deep dive on some of the unique metrics that this device offers that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about. And this includes things like your stress and your pulse oximetry levels, which could be helpful for a lot of people, especially if you suffer from sleep apnea. So let's kick things off with comfort and design. So as you can see, this tracker is super slim and very lightweight, kind of like the Fitbit Inspire. And where Garmin excels with this device, in my opinion, is comfort. I hate wearing a watch to sleep, hence why I wear the Aura Ring, but I have to say, this device didn't really irritate me at all. And the band has a ton of notches in it, which is really great for sizing adjustment and for people with small wrists like me. Now, the only downside is that you are stuck with the watch band that you choose. The tracker is not removable from the band, so you can't swap out colors. In terms of battery, they say this thing can get up to seven days, but I was only able to get about four to five before needing to charge again. Now, this might be because I was utilizing all its features, including the pulse oximetry, so that might've taken up some extra juice but still. And finally, in terms of notifications, you will get real-time alerts, including text messages and social media updates, but the watch face is really, really small, so I wouldn't rely heavily on this feature. Now, let's move on to accuracy, as I do a side-by-side -side comparison of the data that I got from my Apple Watch and Aura Ring. Now, obviously, these devices are more than triple the price of the Garmin Vivo Smart 4, so I wouldn't expect the data to match up exactly. But I did this because I wanted to at least get some type of gauge for how accurate or inaccurate the data from this tracker might be. So let's start with fitness. And overall, I have to say, the Vivo Smart 4 does a pretty good job at tracking my overall steps and auto tracking my workouts. I never once had to start a session for a cardio workout. It literally just started to auto detect when it saw my heart rate going up. And for runs and walks, this device works really well. Now, granted, I was only testing out cardio, so I wasn't actually utilizing it for any strength training. But if you wanna get a better sense of how this tracking device works with weightlifting, I would highly suggest you check out the review by J Syntax after you finish watching this one. And I will link it in the show notes below. Of course, there were a few cardio workouts that this tracker didn't pick up, and that included things like tennis and Pilates. And that's because this particular Garmin device is really only designed to track some of your very basic workout activities, like running, swimming, and biking. So if you're looking for something with more advanced features, then I would say you probably wanna look at one of Garmin's more complex wearables, or even something like the Whoop or Apple Watch. And the final thing to note, which has been the main critique about this particular wearable, is that there is no GPS tracking. Now, this wouldn't be a deal breaker for me per se, but if you are adamant about tracking your distance, then I would say go with a different device. Now we move on to my sleep scores, and here's where we get into some funky numbers. So I was wearing both my Aura Ring and my Garmin on the same arm to try and match up my sleep stats as accurately as possible. And while there were two to three nights in which my sleep stats were not that dissimilar, overall, 
I saw many more drastic misses, more so than not. So let's take June 20th to 23rd, for instance. Now, both devices are programmed to auto detect sleep, but as you'll see here, the Garmin thought I was sleeping for two more hours than my Aura Ring on both the 20th and the 22nd, and a whopping four more hours on June 21st. And across the board, the Garmin said I was in the REM state for at least an hour more than my Aura Ring. And when it comes to deep sleep, well, that's where these numbers are just all over the place. On the 18th of June, the Garmin said I had no REM sleep, but somehow got six hours of deep sleep, which I think is hilarious. And on the 21st, Garmin showed 32 minutes of deep sleep versus the Aura's one hour and eight minutes. Not to mention my average heart rate was about 10 beats higher on the Garmin than it was on my Aura Ring. Now, I know my Aura Ring is by no means perfect, but at least it showed much more consistency across the board. The Garmin really missed the mark on most nights and would therefore not be my go-to tracker for sleep. But there are a couple of very unique metrics that you get from this device that I think are worth discussing. And that includes the pulse oximetry feature. So what this does is measure your blood oxygen saturation levels. The purpose of pulse oximetry is to check how well your heart is pumping oxygen throughout your body. And so this stat could potentially help detect early signs of sleep apnea. Now, something like the Better Sleep Tuner, which has been cleared by the FDA, might do a better job at something like this, but I found the readings to be pretty accurate nonetheless when compared to a medical grade pulse oximeter device. Now the Garmin does auto track your pulse ox while sleeping, but it doesn't do so during the day. But you can still use the device to get a quick snapshot in real time of your pulse ox anytime during the day. Another feature worth noting is the all day stress tracking. And the way this works is by measuring your HRV or heart rate variability data using first beat technology. Now, a couple of months back, I did a full interview with a stress coach in the UK who actually uses first beat devices with his clients. And so I'll link that below in the show notes if you guys wanna go check that out. But what's really interesting about this feature is that you'll actually get relaxation reminders throughout the day if your stress levels get too high. The tracker will actually vibrate when this happens and then walk you through a five minute breathing exercise. I have to say, I was wildly impressed by this feature, especially for the low cost of this device. I've been looking for something like this for a while now. So well done, Garmin. And finally, we come to the last feature worth noting, and that is the body battery. So if you're familiar with the Aura Ring, this sort of acts like your readiness score. The lower your number, technically the more drained you are according to this device. Now, I'll be totally honest, with some of these devices on the market, they have a tendency to overcomplicate things with the inclusion of so many metrics. And unfortunately, I think that's what Garmin has done here. When you look at my body battery stats, it's really unclear how many points I get for sleep and things like walking or running. It seems very arbitrary. So I personally wasn't a huge fan of this feature per se, but I can see how it might be valuable for somebody just starting their health journey, as it does offer suggestions on how to boost your body battery by things like taking a short walk or getting a full eight hours of sleep. And finally, we come to the main pros and cons of the Garmin Vivo Smart 4 and whether or not I think this device is worth trying out. So on the plus side, the activity tracking from this device is actually pretty reliable. The Vivo Smart was pretty consistent in auto tracking my cardio workouts and overall step counts for the day. And when it comes to pulse oximetry, I think this is a really great feature that seems relatively accurate and could be great for somebody looking to measure their blood oxygen levels while sleeping. Another pro is the very small footprint. It is about a third of the size of my Apple Watch and it is jam packed with a ton of features, much more than I expected when I first bought this thing. And finally, the Garmin Connect web app is phenomenal. Like one of the best I've seen so far, even giving Aura a run for its money. As you'll see here, there's a full calendar mode to track your workouts and the dashboards make it super easy to review 
all of your health stats, including things like sleep, stress, and heart rate. Now on the downside, the Vivo Smart is limited in its tracking abilities. As I mentioned before, you only get a handful of workouts to choose from, and there is no GPS tracking, so your distance stats are limited. In terms of sleep, I found my sleep data from this device to be questionable at times. And although I commend Garmin for really attempting to make this a catch-all lifestyle tracker, I think some of the features may have been excessive. And to be honest, I didn't even utilize all the functionalities. But for the low price of $99, I do think the Garmin Vivo Smart 4 is a great entry-level device for anyone looking to make habit changes around stress and activity without having to spend a fortune. One of the biggest barriers to entry for a lot of these devices is that they're so damn expensive. And so that can be a really big upfront investment, especially if you're not even sure you're gonna really utilize the device. So I would consider this Garmin to be your gateway device to really test out the waters on this front. And then if you absolutely love it, but you really want more, well, then just upgrade after 30 days. And of course, I will link to the product in the show notes below if you guys want to go and check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and for sending me your product ideas. And you can always do so either in the comment section below, or you can hit me up on Instagram in my DM at Katie Type A. And if you are not already subscribed, make sure to click on that subscribe button and join the Type A tribe. And I can't wait to see you on the next one.